India is a land of over a billion people, of which 70% live in rural areas. They have no access to professional health care. Public sector is often unavailable. The lack of access to health care affects these rural communities the most, with women, children, and the elderly bearing the brunt. If the public sector is not able to address the need, the only other option is the private sector. This poses immediate challenges. Private sector being profit-driven takes little interest in preventive care or in the poor. The private sector also consists of varying competencies, from the world-class super-specialists in major cities to untrained or formally unqualified care providers in villages with a lot of others in between. Thus, for the average Indian village folk, such as Amina Bibi and her husband Nazir Khan here, accessing quality health care usually means traveling long distances to the nearest city doctor's clinic in a variety of largely inconvenient modes of transport. On an average, a person in an Indian village travels perhaps 15 kilometers to access a doctor at a private clinic. Health care takes away a lot of time and precious resources from such people. They often have to make follow-up visits. The other and quite a common option for people in the villages is finding a local provider. Krishna here has brought his friend Anil to one such person who is not formally trained and who offers treatment that may be unreliable or even unsafe. Each year, over a million Indians, mostly women and children, die only because they didn't have access to quality health care. ब्लड कल्चर हो ना इसकी रिपोर्ट आपको एक हफ्ते में मिलेगी सर सात दिन बाद आना पड़ेगा मुझे सर आपको फिर आना पड़ेगा सर रिपोर्ट देने How does one link various private sector skills located in a vast area and make markets work for the rural poor? This is the challenge that World Health Partners addresses. World Health Partners, WHP, is a young organization working in rural India with a network of doctors and frontline health workers. WHP's strategy is simple. Divide service delivery needs into smaller components and match these with skills that are available close to the patient. Whenever local skills are inadequate, the patient is referred to a higher level of care. Since all the providers belong to the same network, WHP is able to ensure maintenance of quality of care. In each of the project villages, a woman entrepreneur and her male partner are networked into either a Sky Health Center or a Sky Care Center. This Sky Care Center is at the bottom level of WHP structure. It sells over-the-counter products like condoms and vitamins, or services like rapid pregnancy tests. It also serves for referral. Amarpal, a small farmer, has brought his wife Kamlesh to this center in his own village. Savita is the woman owning it. She has prepared a referral slip for the couple and has guided them to the higher level, the Sky Health Center. Savita does not charge anything now, but will get a commission from the Sky Health Center later. Amrapal and Kamlesh now visit the Sky Health Center located about three kilometers from their village Hamidpur. This center has a teleconsultation system which enables a local patient to consult a doctor in the big city. Here the patient is charged a small fee, roughly a dollar, for consultation. If they have a government-issued poverty card, they pay only 20 U.S. cents, with WHP absorbing the subsidy. Patients can also visit a Sky Health Center directly. Each center uses the latest advances in satellite and communication technology. Every Sky Health Center is owned by a woman entrepreneur who works with her male partner, usually her husband. The couple set up the center with their own investment and at times with a loan from WHP. Though the education levels of the owners are low, the training that WHP provides 
gets them competent enough to register the patient and create an electronic medical record. Upon registration, the central facility takes over and a team of counselors and doctors attends to the patient. The doctor is able to get vital signs like pulse and blood pressure and use instruments like stethoscope and cardiogram through the system and write a prescription. For female patients wanting to discuss confidential details, the project ensures that the counselors and doctors attending to them are always women. Once consulted, the patients or their attendants can buy the medicines from a nearby pharmacy. The project maintains a strong supply chain and sells generic medicines under the brand name Sky Meds that often cost 20% of the branded products of similar quality. The project also markets subsidized family planning products. An interesting component of the WHP project is the partnership with the public sector. Every two weeks, a nurse midwife from the public sector visits the Sky Health Centers to insert IUDs and administer contraceptive injections. She also uses the instruments to trace reproductive and gynecological infections in consultation with the central facility doctor. Special devices, including a long corded webcam, enable the doctor to visually examine the client in complete privacy. The doctor has prescribed some tests for Amarpal's wife, Kamlish. She, however, does not have to travel to the big towns where the diagnostic centers are. Instead, a sample collector visits the Sky Health Center once a week on a predetermined schedule. Reports are delivered electronically to doctors at WHP's central medical facility. So, on follow-up visits, Kamlesh will find her test reports already available with her doctor, who can now improve the diagnosis and treatment. Rural and low-income patients like her thus no longer need to make repeated visits to town for tests or report collection. There is, however, a limit to what such a teleconsultation system can handle. If a patient, such as Kavita here, needs to be physically examined or to be surgically operated, teleconsultations cannot address the need. The project has networked formally qualified general practitioners and specialists available in the big towns surrounding the villages as franchisee clinics. The project promises these clinics large caseloads from rural areas. In return, it negotiates substantially reduced rates for services. The electronic medical records are available to the franchisee physicians on a need basis. The general practitioners can also use specialists at the central facility for remote consultation. Curative care gives high financial returns, but a pre-agreed volume of delivering preventive care is a prerequisite to remain in the network. Which means that if the network providers do not deliver services like family planning, antenatal care, or immunization, they risk being dropped from the network and forfeit the opportunity to earn from curative care. A sophisticated management system interlinks all the networks and enables financial transactions between them. The project also provides strong rural marketing support. The primary medium is through film shows where Bollywood entertainment is interspersed with project messages. The project invests heavily in training rural service providers and city doctors and links them through training and financial support. The project is also responsible for establishing and maintaining good quality communication networks. The project has shown WHP's approach can cost efficiently deliver desperately needed services to the rural poor. Government and donor funds can be channelized for specific outputs which are validated by biometric systems. More services like microscopy and biochemical tests will deliver a broader range of services. The project has begun on a good note 
and we are hopeful further refinements will improve its impact. For continuous updates on this program, please visit our website, www.worldhealthpartners.org.